Have you ever wondered exactly what grieves the heart of God? Well, here in Genesis chapter 6, verses 1 through 7, we're going to see that clearly. And this is a very heavy passage. Matter of fact, there's several things in this passage that scholars for years and years have debated exactly what they mean. But again, when we get through with it, we're going to see exactly what God desires of us. And we begin with men multiplying as God had commanded them to, but in a way that God had not commanded them to. It says that mankind began to multiply on the earth, and daughters were born to them. And the sons of God saw that the daughters of mankind were beautiful, and they took any they chose as their wives for themselves. Now, here's the first thing. The sons of God. What exactly is this referring to? And Again, different uh, ideas to what it is. Is it some type of heavenly creature? Is it uh, someone that's of higher uh, standing on earth? Maybe someone in royalty? Is it uh, someone from the line of Seth that would be of the line of God um, marrying someone from the line of Cain? Whatever it is, it's not something that God desired. And so it's taking place and God's response is this. My spirit will not remain with mankind forever because they are corrupt. And their days will be 120 years. And here's another thing that's kind of debated a little bit. What does it mean that their days are 120 years? Does that mean that life expectancy, that our lifespan would be no more than 120 years? Or is it really more talking about that as we know what's coming up, that God's going to flood the earth, that it's 120 years until that time? Um, and probably that's what it is, is that God's saying, your time on earth is limited. My spirit will not be with you forever. And then we have this word, this Nephilim that is introduced here. And it says the Nephilim were on the earth, both in those days and afterward, when the sons of God came to the daughters of mankind who bore children to them. And they were the powerful men of old, the famous men. Now, again, what's the meaning? Where do these Nephilim come from? Who are these people? Um, uh, Really, the word fallen can come from their name. Also, uh, strong, big, maybe even giants could be referred to here. Uh, but God had kind of had enough. Uh, he see, the Lord says, uh, he saw that human wickedness was widespread on the earth and that every inclination of the human mind was nothing but evil all the time. That's key. Evil all the time on the mind. And the Lord regretted that he had made man on the earth, and he was deeply grieved. Now, here's another thing. We see this word regretted, and we think, wait, God's sovereign. God's all-knowing. Um, he doesn't make mistakes. So how could he have created something and then regretted his creation? And that's not what it is here. It, it's, it's actually referring more towards it grieved God. It saddened God what was happening to the people that he created and how they were turning against him. And the Lord said, I will wipe mankind who I created off the face of the earth together with the animals, creatures that crawl and the birds of the sky for I regret that I made them. Again, here's that word regret. God is grieved. And I said at the beginning that we would see exactly what grieves God's heart. And you know, the truth is in our lives today, we're going to do things that displease God. Uh, even as a believer, as someone who loves the Lord and walks with him, uh, we're still going to make mistakes. We're still going to uh, displease him. We're still going to, to give in to temptation occasionally. And we have the forgiveness of God. But what's, what's key to this is, is the fact that the Bible says that every inclination, every thought they had was towards evil. They were consumed by it. And God promises through uh, his, his, the rainbow in the sky is a promise that that he will never flood the earth again. Praise the Lord that we know that. But I also think that we can take away from this that we need to check ourselves, right? Are our minds set on things above? Are they set on things that are godly? Are they set on things that glorify the Lord? Uh, may we never come to that point where our minds are totally consumed with evil, but we're constantly thinking things that will glorify him. And I hope that encourages you a little bit and challenges you a little bit today in this story.